going to be showing you how to use drop shadows on your digital elements to make them look a little more realistic and a little more like traditional scrapbook elements. Here I've got a selection of papers, title, tags, and buttons from the Scarlet Letter collection. Some of them are from the starter kit and the rest are from the add-on kits. I've added a drop shadow to the piece of paper that's right here to kind of pop it off the page and make it look more like a traditional scrapbooking layout. I'm going to show you how to add a drop shadow to this tag right here, but I want to zoom in. And a couple of ways that you can zoom in are first to go over and get the zoom tool off of your toolbar. It's going to be the second tool here in your toolbar. Or you can temporarily access that zoom tool by holding down the Apple key and the space bar if you're on a Mac, or the control key and the space bar if you're working on a PC. Once you select the tag by clicking on it, you can see over here in the layers palette I have it selected, then we want to get the drop shadow. You find the drop shadows up here on the right hand side of your screen under the effects tab. The second icon, which is the two rectangles on top of each other, are layer styles, and that's where you find drop shadows. Once you click on layer styles, if drop shadows does not appear on this, in this window right here, click the downward arrow and select drop shadows from the menu list. It will give you eight drop shadows to choose from, and the one that I like to start with is the low one, which is on the top right hand corner. Once I click on that, you can see that it pops that tag up off of the layout. For me, it's a, just a little bit too intense, and so I want to reduce that drop shadow just a bit. To reduce it, I'm going to go down to the layer that's highlighted, which is the one the tag is on, and you can see now I have this FX icon. If I double click on it, it'll bring up the Style Settings dialog box. This allows me to change the size, the distance, and the opacity of that drop shadow. I'm going to start with the opacity and I'm going to reduce the opacity to around 40 to 45 percent and then I might uh, tweak the distance just a little bit and once I like how it looks I'm going to click OK. Now sometimes I'll want a little more intense drop shadow on the object that I'm working on or the element that I'm using and I'll show you one of those cases. I'm going to temporarily access the hand tool by pushing down my space bar um, you can find the hand tools right here in your toolbar. It's the third tool down. But if I hold down my spacebar, as long as I have it held down, I'll get the, the hand tool and then I can pull through my layout and go to another position in my layout. Here I have three buttons, two, well, two glazed brads and a button from the Scar Scarlet Letter Starter Kit. And this glazed brad right here, I want to pop it a little bit more off the page. Now all of our buttons and glazed brads come with a little bit of a drop shadow to make them look more like a traditional scrapbook element. But if you want to add more to it, you can certainly do that. And in this case, where I have this brad sitting on the button and another brad, I want it to be popped just a little bit more off the page for that more traditional scrapbook feel. So I'm going to go up and double click on that low drop shadow and in this case I'm going to leave the settings as is because it's actually popped a little bit more off the page as if it were sitting on the button and the other glazed brad. So that's how you use drop shadows with the elements that you get from basicgray.com.